Hi, this is Karan Sud, Emanus Berlakis, and this is case 187 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case of an inferior STEMI in the early hours of the morning. The patient was an elderly gentleman with previous bypass. Unfortunately, we did not have the anatomy at the time of presentation. He presented with chest pain, and then he was found to have inferior ST segment elevation and was sent for emergent coronary angiogram. We got femoral access because of the previous cabbage to facilitate uh, engagement of the bypass grafts, and then the diagnostic and geography. The left main uh, was okay. There was occlusion of the LAD, some diffuse disease in the circumflex, but the flow was okay. The right coronary artery had TME2 flow, and there was some diffusely diseased distal vessel. Initially, we were concerned that maybe there is a bypass graft that is the culprit, given the contrast retention. But then, uh, um, again, repeat injection, there is diffusely diseased distal vessel and the staining along the vein graft. There was a vein graft to the obtuse marginal branch that seemed to be okay with TME3 flow. And then uh, um, no, significant, no significant disease. And then there was a vein graft to the PDA, which, although a little aneurysmal, it also had TME3 flow. And then we had a lot of difficulty getting into the aorta because of uh, aortic tortuosity. But with non-selective subclavian injection, we did see that there was undergrade flow going down the lima. So what's the culprit? And it took a while. And of course, at uh, very early hours when people are sleep deprived, uh, the judgment is not the best. But eventually, after a lot of thinking and looking at the images, and given the inferior ST elevation, we decided that probably the culprit was the distal right coronary artery supplying this posterior lateral branch. So the plan was to perform PCI, engage uh, PTCA, and hopefully put some stents. But uh, we did have a lot of problems, and the problem was that manipulation of the catheters was very challenging because of aortic tortuosity. We tried uh, several guides without success, we then upsized to a 65 centimeter long sheath, and still we were unable to engage with an AL1 or a 3D ride. So what to do? One of the old tricks is to get a diagnostic catheter, which is more torqueable because it's thicker, engage the coronary with that, and then advance a supportive wire, such as a Grand Slam or an Ironman, all the way down the vessel and use this 014 300 centimeter long wire as a rail to advance the guide. And this is exactly what happened. We had the wire down the vessel and then we were able to advance an AL1 guide and uh, we were finally able to reposition the wire and uh, advance the guide with help with pulling the wire and eventually engage the right coronary artery. There you go. Then we performed balloon angioplasty, and actually this was very encouraging because now we saw the vessel was actually much larger than we thought before. So we were um, happily surprised that actually, yes, this is the culprit for the patient's presentation. But unfortunately, after we put in a stent, we had uh, essentially occlusion of uh, the first posterior lateral. There was also some diffuse disease uh, on the uh, more lateral posterior lateral. We did some balloon inflation. We also stented the proximal right coronary artery. But then we decided to not place an additional stents. The concern here was about compressing this further and obstructing the flow. Uh, we could have treated uh, the posterior lateral, but we decided at uh, this time after multiple hours to just uh, let it go. There was a risk of losing this branch and bring the patient back at the stage procedure. And then before coming out, we did uh, a little more selective picture showing that there is good flow on the lima down to a diagonal branch. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that identifying the culprit can be challenging, especially in previous bypass patients, and especially when they come in uh, the early hours of the day when everyone is sleep deprived. Having aortic tortuosity can be a major problem for engaging the coronary arteries. One of the solutions is to use a long sheath and slightly smaller catheters. We did use an eight French sheath, and then we were able to 
uh, engage uh, with um, diagnostic catheters. The trick of using the diagnostic catheter to engage an advanced 300 cm supportive wire was pivotal to allow us to engage the right coronary artery with the guide. And then, uh, although the vessel initially appeared very small, after we predilated, uh, there was significant increase in the size of the vessel and uh, the patient's symptoms subsequently resolved. Thank you.